Hey everybody, this is Alex Merced, developer advocate here at Dremio. And in this video, what I want to do is I want to add another project to our account here. So what I'm going to do is that, see here, this was project settings. So for me to set settings for this individual Dremio project, down here, I have my organization settings. So that's going to be for the organization that I created, where I'll be able to like add and remove projects and whatnot. So I already have a Sonar project. And if I want to go add more, I can go manage that there. But if I want to add an Arctic catalog, I'll click here on Arctic. Okay, and we'll just call it, we'll literally just call it Arctic. Okay, we're gonna add it. Do, 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 do. And done. Okay, see now I have this Arctic catalog that I'll be able to like write data to. Okay, and the cool thing about Arctic is that again, it's gonna have, have Git like features. So basically with any data set that I have in here, which we'll add one in a second, um, I'll be able to like take a look at the commits on those data, take a tag that data. I'll be able to create branches and merge branches. Okay, so literally I can like create a branch called ETL. So create a branch for main. So we'll create a branch. Well, actually first let's create a data set. So what I'll do is I'll head back to Sonar. And again, the thing is I don't have to do it in Sonar. Basically this catalog I can connect to from Son um, Spark. I can connect to from Flink. Pretty much any uh, query engine can connect to this catalog. And I can have all sorts of data sets in here and basically any query engine can take advantage of these features of branching uh, and so forth. But let me head over to Sonar. So I'll click over here, go to my Sonar projects. Okay, click on my first project that I have open. And basically what we want to do is we want to add our Arctic source. So I'm going to click on add source, add Arctic. And it's going to give me a list of all the Arctic catalogs that I've created. So I'm going to say uh, the Arctic catalog that I created here, I'm going to add that to my account and hit save. And ta -da. that was basically that's all it takes. It's as easy as that to to get your Arctic catalog set up here. And again, you can see here if I wanted to browse the data, I can switch between any branches that I have in there and commits and whatnot, so I can look at the data at particular times. But what I'm going to want to do is that I'm going to take that New York taxi trips data, or actually let's create a whole new uh, table. I'm just going to go to the query editor, okay, and let's create a table. We'll say create table Arctic because that's the catalog. Arctic dot um, you know names and we're gonna say basically it just has a name that's a string. Okay, and that should be it. So let's run that. Mm, we're gonna string by five for column time. Oh, was it text? Always. Text. Oh, Varchar. There we go. My bad. Long morning. Okay. Cool. Okay, so now I've now created a table. Okay, so I now have a table that is created. Okay, in my Arctic catalog. Okay, but you see that pretty straightforward. I can run that, or I can run those queries. I got really nice, insightful error messages that really kind of describe what I need to do to fix my query. Um, and I was able to kind of get, just get there pretty quickly. And now I have a table. Let me go back to my Arc catalog so we can kind of see that table existing. So, yep, that's all fine. If I go back to my Arc catalog, I can see now I have this data set there. See, names. Okay, so now what we need to do is we want to create a branch. So I'll go create a branch, and I'll go create a branch from main. And we'll just call it like ETL branch, pretending like I'm ETLing data. Okay. So now let's go back to our Sonar project. And what I'm going to do is see right now I have the ETL branch on. So again, I can go over here in my SQL editor, put that back in dark mode. Okay. And I can go back over here and I can say what branch I have currently on. So right now I'm going to have Arctic ETL as the branch that I'm actively using. Okay. So if I want to insert into arctic.names um, okay we'll say name values and we'll just say Alex Merced okay and let's just run that query Okay, and again, I'm running that extra small engine. 
um, cool. So that row has been inserted. So cool. Now let's see what happens right now if I would actually go query that that. So select all from Arctic dot names. Uh, oops, forgot the from keyword. Select all from Arctic dot names. And again, I don't have to type this all out every time. I could head over here to Arctic. And I can see that here's the names data set, and I can just plop that right there. Okay, and that saves me a whole lot of time. Okay, well, let's see what happens. And see right there, I see that the entry that I just added. But now if I switch back to the main branch, so if I go over here and I switch back to the main branch, okay, and then I run that query again, there should be no records because we did this, see, no records because again, I've isolated that work on the branch. But let's say I am ready to, I could run a query in here to merge those branches. I could also do it from my Arctic catalog UI. So right from here, I can head over to Arctic. I can head over to my branches, head over to ETL. Okay, click on, let's see here. Okay, and from this screen, I can take a look at my data sets. I can take a look at the commits. So I see, here I can see the commits on that branch. But again, if I wanted to like merge a branch, what I could do is from this screen here, I see these options over here. Okay, so I can go like merge a branch and do some other things, create a branch from this branch and so forth. So what I want to do is I want to merge this branch. Okay, and I want to merge it into main. So I'll click merge. And there we go. The branch ETL has emerged in the main. So imagine a scenario that basically you are e basically all your data consumers are going to be querying this main branch, but you can do all your ETL work from the ETL branch. So as new data comes in, it gets ingested here to the ETL branch. You can do all your data quality checks. So run all your queries to check for like data integrity and things like that. Make sure there's no missing values. And once everything checks out, you merge it. Okay. Or if you need to do work on multiple tables, you can create a branch edit those multiple tables and then merge it so that way all those changes all appear at the same time. So this gives you the ability to sort of like isolate that work without interrupting the, on, the concurrent workflows that are going on with other data consumers. But now if I go back to Sonar, and again, this would be the same thing if I were creating this data in Spark or in Plink or wherever I'm deciding to work from because that Arctic catalog is available to all tools. Um, but again, you know, here you have this nice unified UI. But now if I go back and I query, so let me go back to my SQL editor, and I were to say select all from arctic.names, and then again I switch this over to the main branch. And again, I could even like specify commits if I wanted to, so I can query it at a particular commit. So there's a lot of really cool stuff you can do. Okay. I can go here and I'll see that now that, that record is going to be there now. Why? Because that merge had occurred. So now that's part of my data. Okay, so that's Arctic. And again, basically it's gonna give you that sort of data as code functionality. And then you can just make that as a, the place where you can, you can create branches that kind of handle those ETL workloads. And uh, which again, can save you a lot of trouble because now if you make a mistake, you can easily roll back to a previous commit. Um, again, you can isolate the work so that way you don't merge the data in and make it available to your data consumers until you know that the quality is there. Um, there's a lot of benefits to really kind of working with your data from that catalog. And again, it easily makes that data available to other engines like Spark, like Flink, and so forth. So there's a lot of benefits in having a Sonar project, which again is going to provide you that semantic layer and the ability to connect all your data sets uh, to be queried from one place with one semantic layer. But then you also have the Arctic catalog, which can be a good catalog of your iceberg tables that's going to give you that sort of data as code feel to um, really kind of have those workflows that ensure data quality. And at the end of the day, it's really easy to use. Like you can't beat that, right? Um, and you got a lot of flexibility to manage your costs, but also increase performance. So again, you can choose what kind of size engines you want so that way you can get the performance that you need. Okay. At the cost, you, at the cost that you want so that way you're not, you don't have, you're not immediately paying for these extra large, uh, instances. And you can, again, route that, um, you have data reflection to so reduce the amount of compute you need because you can materialize your sort of really critical data sets. Um, so you have a lot of features here that are going to really, again, help you keep costs to a minimum, keep performance to a maximum, and give you the flexibility and ease of use so that way you can ensure data quality. So 
Hopefully you guys enjoyed this tour of the Dremio Cloud platform. You guys have a great day and enjoy. I'll see you all later with more tutorials on Dremio Cloud.